Hey everyone, so today we're going to be looking at market volatility to figure out what the market is saying because this is always a difficult concept for a lot of people to get the, the what, the what the market is saying, separating you know the actual signal from the noise, so to speak. Second, what we're going to do is we're going to look at how accurate it is, why this could be here, and then more importantly, why is this useful for us when we're taking names on individual trades? That's what we're going to cover today, along with a nice little calendar and a tool that I believe will be helpful for you guys to look at economic releases, because obviously that's going to drive market volatility more than anything. So let's begin. What we can see is on this, the S&P 500 volatility time series, we can see that we've seen volatility rise drastically over the past couple of days. This is most likely driven due to the fear from the regional banks collapsing, such as Silicon Valley and Signature. We've seen implied volatility rally from around 17.5% all the way up to 23.5%. Now, this is what I would say is a lot more important than whatever someone on Bloomberg or CNBC has to say, which is, oh, markets are stable. Oh, markets are not stable. This tells me that the market is more fearful than they were a week ago. And we can see historically that the S&P 500 is the most efficient, name, right? There is very minimal edge here, right? It's usually extremely accurate in what you know future volatility is going to see. You can see this beautiful lag in the blue line here, same here with what I'm referring to. So that gets the what out of the way. Now, the why, I think, is due to, obviously, like I said, the regional bank failures. But it's also could be driven by the economic releases that are coming this week. Huge economic releases this week. As a matter of fact, just looking at the United States, tomorrow on March 14th, CPI is coming out, right? The following day, on the 15th of March, we are going to get the CPI release. And then on the 16th, we get mortgage um, housing starts on the 16th. And then on Friday, we have sentiment and manufacturing indices dropping. Huge week in terms of forward-looking indicators and what the Fed might do. And as we know, that's going to have a huge effect on the overall market. So what can we use or what can we do with this information? We kind of figured out the what. We kind of figured out the why. Now, the question is, how? How do we use this? How is this useful? Well, we're going to go through a real quick example on a name such as, hmm, let's go with Roku, right? If we look at Roku, we can, or yeah, we could say that implied volatility has risen a little bit over the past couple of days. Stock prices come down. People have talked about, you know, the fear and uncertainty with this, you know, being that a lot of their assets were parked in Silicon, but, you know, now their assets are protected and guaranteed by federal authorities, so there shouldn't be a risk here, right? Well, so let's say we thought there was a trade. However, guys, if we look at the correlation between Roku and the S&P 500, we're going to see that this stock has an extremely high base. In other words, this company is particularly exposed to what the overall market is exposed to more times than not, being that it has a high beta. So if volatility is going up on Roku and volatility is going up in S&P 500, it's, it could be more or less due to just overall market forces, less on just Roku in particular. I'm not saying it's the case, but just an example. Now, let's say we found something on a stock, you know, like a biotech thing, right? Like, let's go with like a biotech. Right, we looked at Biogen and we saw this rally and implied move. Right, we saw this pick up. Right, and we go over again to the same thing. We look at the beta for Biogen. Right, and it's going to have a much lower beta. The lower the beta, the more this could be due to company forces or industry forces that affect the company, unless on broader market volatility. Think of it like. You know, if you have a bicycle and the bicycle is going down a hill, right? What is making the bicycle go faster? The hill, right? But let's say we have a car go down a hill, right? Is it the hill that's making it go down or is it the engine, right? There's different forces that drive something in the same environment is what I'm getting at. So guys, I really hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you guys have any questions, feel free to message me. If you guys have any names that you would like us to take a look at, feel free to comment below. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.